The heart of Hollywood, fabulous city of make-believe, glamour capital of the world, where music, laughter, and tears are manufactured to stir the pulse of moviegoers of all nations. Vast acres of Hollywood are covered by huge studios, where all the emotions of human life are recorded for the eye and ear in pictures that move and talk. Hollywood is news. 24 hours a day, stories go out from Hollywood over the wires of the nation to be read by millions. Stories by Hedda Hopper, Harrison Carroll, Sidney Skolsky, Jimmy Starr. Hollywood's triumphs, its comic sidelights, its romances, its tragedies are broadcast to the world by Erskine Johnson, George Fisher, Luella Parsons, Jimmy Fiddler, and many others. The film capital is noted for its colorful night spots, where fine food and entertainment prevail. After regular working hours, it is only natural that in places such as these, the glamorous figures of the screen seek relaxation from their arduous duties before the cameras. Correction, please. Did I say regular working hours? Hollywood's working hours are seldom regular. Here is one of the studios where many of the stars work. It is night. Yet the task of producing entertainment for the world goes on. You there, hold it! These men are actors. They work at night, too. But this man is not acting. Oh. Yes, miss? My chart for today. The numbers can't be right. I must have made a mistake. What can I do for you, my good man? Is this Mona Harrison's place? Yes, this is Miss Harrison's residence. But the service entrance is... Is that her? Uh, just what do you wish, sir? I wish four hundred and thirty-one dollars C.O.D. Four hundred and thirty-one dollars C.O.D. What's the trouble, Fields? Uh, a box from uh, uh, Hector Rose from the Palisade Studio. So he finally decided to send the dress fabrics I ordered. This person wishes to collect four hundred and thirty-one dollars. Do you mean to say that Hector dared send them C.O.D.? Uh, yes, ma'am. I guess he wanted his money right quick. I'll make out a check for you. The service entrance is this okay, way. Okay, bud, okay. Hurry, Theos. Saints preserve us. Oh, blood. Why, why should anyone do a thing like this? I presume I should call the police. The police? No. Let's not call the police yet. But Miss Harris, he's dead. I know. I, I'm going to call Joe Medford. But Mr. Medford is, is a reporter. Please, let me handle this. And don't talk about it. Please. 
Let's go inside at once. Medford. Oh, hello, Mona. What's on your mind? Right now? Oh, look, honey, it can't be that important. What's up? I can't tell you over the phone, Joe, but I've got to see you right away. I need you. Believe me. Look, honey, I've been waiting to hear that last line for a long time. Be right over. Here's that city hall, Squibb. I'm going to duck out for a little while, if you don't mind. I do mind. This is important. I know. That glamour puss is always important. How many times a week do you have to interview the girl? This is not an interview. She needs me desperately. Why doesn't she call a cop? A cop? Why, she needs someone with a great big brain. Seriously, Emmett, she's terribly upset about something. And could be a story. Why don't you stop kidding yourself, Joe? She's just giving you the old come on. Movie stars are not for newspaper mugs. Forget about those plush lined swimming pools. Well, Mona's is lined with ermine. Baby, and tell me what it's all about. Well, yesterday I had a big battle at the studio with Hector Rose. Oh, you mean that male costume whipper-upper? Unpleasant little character, isn't he? Want me to take a sock at him? No, listen, Joe, I... My numerology chart for today warned me to be careful. It's all tragedy, see? Uh, look, baby, quit sparring. This is Joe, remember? This numbers game of yours and your fight with Hector Rose can't be serious, unless you kill the guy. No, I didn't. I didn't kill him. But he's dead. His body's out by the service porch. Yeah, that's a nice place for him. What? It came COD in a packing case. Well, this I gotta see, and even if I do, I won't believe it. Working in a kitchen with a body lying just outside the door. I don't like it. There's nothing in the book says I gotta get dinner with a dead body under my window. He's going to bury that thing on the premises. I'm packing me bag. Three bullet holes. A very dead citizen. You've got to do something, Joe. You've got to get rid of it. Oh, don't be frightened, baby. After all, you didn't kill him. Oh, but somebody killed him and sent his body here. Yeah. Now, who'd want to do that? I... Th I don't know. What are all those bolts of cloth doing here? Bolts of... Please, Joe, take it away. Please, the newspapers. They'll tear me to pieces if it's found here. Oh, now, look, don't worry about the cops or the newspapers. Just leave everything to Joey. You know I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. Then you will help me, Joe? Sure, baby, sure. Uh, you better come inside and try to rest if you can. I'll do anything you say. Careful. I might take you up on that sometime. Sure, it's on the level, boss. An exclusive. And get this. The corpse came COD. Yeah, in a packing case with a lot of dress goods. Send a photographer out here right away, will you? I want to get a lot of pictures before the police arrive. Oh, Mona's prostrated. And... Call you right back. I was saying, Mona's prostrated, hysterical. Operator, police station, emergency. Oh, hello, Sarge. 
I want to talk to Lieutenant Wilson. Mr. Medford. Uh, Joe Medford. Yeah. I said I wanted to talk to Lieutenant Wilson. Yes, yeah, Sergeant? Oh. So we're at Palisades. Okay, I'll call him there. So, I'm to leave everything to you. Now, wait a minute. You promised to protect me. I am protecting you. You called the police. The one thing I couldn't let happen. Now, look, Mona, you didn't think I was going to hide that body, did you? The police would have discovered it sooner or later and assumed that you were guilty. Can't you understand that? But, Joe... Now, will you quiet down while I call Wilson? No, you mustn't. Why not? You know Wilson. He's always hanging around the studio. He's a fan of yours, and he'll give you all the breaks. Is it your fault if some criminal with a warped sense of humor ships you a corpse? Wilson will know you didn't plug the guy and ship him to yourself. Will he? Sure he will. But my fans, they'll think all kinds of things. Look, darling, when the facts are known, everybody will be on your side. You know that everybody loves you, even me. Why, you'll carry this thing off with the dignity of a Bernhardt. I'm afraid, Joe. Palisade Studios, reception desk. Oh, hello, Mr. Medford. Lieutenant Wilson? Yes, I believe he's down the lot. I'll try to locate him. Here he is now. For you, Lieutenant. Joe Medford. Thanks, Peggy. Hello, Joe. What's on your mind? Huh? This isn't a gag, is it, Joe? Okay. Don't touch anything. I'll be right over. Thanks. Hello, Lieutenant. What's new? Why, uh... The same old sixes and sevens, Mr. Edwards. Be seeing you later. Have you seen Hector Rose? No, I haven't, Mr. Edwards. He hasn't come in yet. Mr. Edwards, I sing. And, and I thought if I had... Mr. Edwards is a very busy man. He's president of the studio, you know. Maybe later. I've been listening to that for weeks. Don't lose patience. Archie Leach sat in that chair for a year. Archie Leach? What does he do? He seems to be doing fine since he changed his name to Cary Grant. Hi, Larry. Did I get here first? Yeah, the cops haven't arrived yet. We never miss, do we, Joe? You find the stiffs and I beat the other papers to the picks. That's right, I never call the opposition. You sure you got enough equipment this trip? Oh, you know me, Joe. I'm a specialist. I always bring along everything. You never can tell when you're gonna run into something. That's right, you never can tell. There's the box and there's the body. You get busy, I'll be inside. Okay, Joe. Hmm, he's a good-looking guy. Well, that's what you get for fooling around women. Take me, for instance. I'm a married man with four kids. I wouldn't fool around the best-looking... Hello, doll. Want your picture in the paper? Oh, no. <laughs> Miss Mona wouldn't like it. Ah, uh, but the customers would. Come on. You're about to be posed by one of the best still men in the town that's crawling with still men. Well. Yes, sir? Joe Medford sent for us. Is he here? Yes, sir. Will you come in, please? Hello, Joe. Hello, Lieutenant. How do you do, Miss Harrison? You know Dave Short. Sure. Where's the body? Out back. I'll show you. That won't be a minute. A still? Dave. That's the body you're supposed to photograph, not this one. I know. Just getting a little cheesecake to go with it. Hiya, Lieutenant. How's about one of you with the stiff? I suppose your paper's on the street with the story already. Now, you know I have a job to do. I gave you all the breaks. Could have called any old cop, you know. Well, that's big of you. Sometimes suppose you try calling the police first and study your paper, huh? Make a memo of that. Felice, go inside. 
Hey, Jeeves, how's about one of you like you was opening the box? Oh, no. <laughs> Missed him. That guy sure is camera shy. How about it, Lieutenant? One with you beside the body. No more pictures for the homicide crew arrives. I'll toss you in the clink for taking what you've got. You want me to take those plates away from him, Mark? What's the matter with you people around here? Don't nobody want their picture in the paper? Yeah, why don't you let them take a shot of you? Publicity never hurt a cop. That's what promotions are made of. Alongside that corpse, you ought to look pretty good. I thought you wanted to soft pedal this on account of Mona Harrison. Well, you know I can't soft pedal a murder. But I'm going to see to it that Mona isn't hurt, and you're going to help me. Well, that's very noble of us. You sure nobody's touched anything here? Not a thing. It's all yours. Rush that stuff down the office, will you? Sure. Oh, it went off. Why, you... you... Don't you touch me now. I'm only doing my job the same as you are. Get set, baby. Remember, sir, Bernhardt. Wasn't there a transfer company name on the truck? No, sir. I'm sure there was no any lettering of any kind on the truck. It was just a plain, very old vehicle. Is that right, Miss Harrison? Yes, Lieutenant. Well, didn't you think it odd the goods weren't delivered by a studio truck? I didn't think about it at the time. The COD charge did puzzle me, but I, I thought it was one of Hector's usual nasty little tricks because of an argument we'd had. What did the delivery man look like? Well, he was just, uh, just a transfer man in his late 40s or 50s. Can you describe him? I'm afraid not, sir. Delivery persons all look so much alike. That's great. Well, he collected a COD of 400 and some odd dollars. Where's the receipt? Well, I... Okay. Didn't get any receipt. You just signed his book, that's all. You mean you gave him that much money and didn't get a receipt? Yeah, she was all excited about getting the material and... And, uh, well, she gave him a check. That's a receipt, isn't it? You said you had a fight with Hector Rose. An argument, not a fight. Oh, I see. Well, the packing case and everything in it will have to be impounded as evidence. Everything's there just as it arrived? Yes, Lieutenant. No one touched it. It's all there. You didn't touch anything? No, nothing. I called Joe as soon as Fields had pried open the case and... I suppose it didn't occur to you to call the police. Oh, lay off her. She's been through enough. Okay. Look, Miss Harrison, I'll protect you as much as I can, but you've got to cooperate with me. Thank you. Well, the thing to do is to locate the truck driver and find out who ordered him to pick up that box. You don't mind if I call the fingerprint expert in the coroner first, do you, Nikki, darling? Where's the telephone? This way, please. You did okay, baby. Well, I'm going to beat it. Joe, you can't leave me here with that detective. God, honey, it's important. But what if he, what if he accuses me of the murder? Remember that picture you made, Homicide House, when the detective accused you of being the killer? Yes, but that was just a picture. But what did you say to him? Oh, I said, prove it, copper. That's it. Give Wilson the same line. It'll confuse him. Peggy. Heard the news, Joe? Heard it. I printed it. I suppose the mob is in Lance Fowler's office. With their knives sharpened. There are 971 reporters in there trying to pump him. Want to go in? No, I don't go for crowds. I don't want to see him anyway. Incidentally, do you know anything that I should know that he doesn't know? If you mean about the murder. Huh? No. Okay. Let me through, will you? Come on, Fowler, give up. She fought with him. He was killed right here on the lot and shipped out. What time was Rose last seen alive? That I can answer. About 8 o'clock last night. He worked late. Now, boys, if you'll just give us a little time to prepare a statement. Time he wants. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a Where's time. Where's Mona What's stalling? Yeah.
feel if it isn't little Rosemary, the daily registered sob sister? Hell, I knew that basket looks good. Get me out of this, Joe Medford. Now, there's no hurry. Your paper won't be on the street until tomorrow morning. That'll give you plenty of time to rewrite my stuff. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't realize you had such pretty ankles. Forget my ankles. Get me out of here. Nah, I never forget an ankle. Besides, I can't help you. Union rules. I'll have to call a maintenance man. I could kill you for this, Joe Medford. Get out of temper, temper. Oh, please get me out of here. Well, all right, troublesome. But I really should get Larry to get a shot of you before we go. But just because I love you, here we go. Ooh. I might have known I'd find you snooping around poor old Hector's desk. Snooping around poor old Hector's? I suppose you're looking for paper clips. Why aren't you in there with the rest of the mob in Fowler's office? And why aren't you? Hey, did you find anything of interest before I got here? Because you might as well tell me. You're scooped anyway. Okay, I'm scooped. But the big scoop is when they find the murderer. You've got something there, sweetheart. And who do you suppose is going to find him? Him or her? Tell me, did your blonde cinema heartthrob kill the dressmaker herself, or did she hire someone to do the job? Well, this is off the record. She killed him and had him shipped to herself. And just as soon as she knocks off another one, she's going to use him for bookends. Any uh, further questions? Yes. Yes, I got a question. Look, Joseph, I like you. Ooh. Even though you do have a weakness for two-headed blondes. Why can't we work together on this? You with the afternoon breaks and me with the morning stuff. We could beat all the other newspapers to the punch. We'd make a great team. What do you say? Mm -hmm. Sounds rather interesting. But, you see, I have the inside track with Mona. So why should I cut you in, sweetheart? Ever since you sailed for that baby-faced witch, you've had your eyes full of stardust. She's making a sap out of you. And, of course, you wouldn't make a sap out of me. Oh, no. Not until you got a moment alone with the telephone. Thank you, Rosemary, but I'm playing this one alone. Don't you trust anybody? Very seldom, especially newspaper dames that happen to be pretty. Oh, Joseph, I didn't know you cared. I don't. Well, that makes me very happy. You, you, you. I'm sure you know the word I had in mind. <laughs> Take it easy on Mona, that's all I ask. That's oh, all I ask. Yes. Joe. Oh, hello, Lance. Where have you been? Why? Mitchell Edwards wants to see you. Oh, does he? By a strange coincidence, I was about to drop in on him. Hi, Mitch. Want to see me? Yeah, Mona called. Oh. She told me you'd been at the house. That's right. What do you think, Joe? Do you think she killed him? Do you? I don't know. She and Hector fought like a couple of prima donnas. <clears throat> uh, that's not for publication, you understand. I know you think as much of Mona as I do. Maybe more. What do you know about this uh, Hector Rose? You brought him out here from New York, didn't you? Yes, he was a jeweler and dress designer. But that has nothing to do with things now. It's Mona I'm worried about. She isn't strong enough to stand this pitiless publicity. Mona's as strong as a horse. Lance, you're holding out on me. You boys are worried about something else. Come, give. There's nothing to give, Joe. Yes? Lieutenant Wilson to see you. All right, send him in. Now, don't mention Mona unless Wilson brings her name up. Hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Father. Have I missed anything? Well, for a keyhole expert, that's practically an admission of defeat. You should know, dear, with all the experience you've had. No, we... Uh, Lieutenant Wilson, I was hoping I'd see you. I'm certainly glad you're on this case. You're so fair. You never play favorites when it comes to the press breaks. Don't look at me. I didn't ask her in. Well, what are the latest developments? Have you arrested Mona Harrison yet? No, Mr. Durant, and I'll have to ask you to leave. I'd like to talk to these gentlemen alone. You mean I've got to leave and he's going to stay? Medford's a material witness. I don't care if he's an accomplice, and he probably is. If he stays, I stay. My paper's more important than his. Please, Mr. Durant, I've got enough trouble. Oh, Lieutenant, I've been meaning to tell you. I'd like to write a story on the way you work. I've always been fascinated by the police. I had a police dog once. All right, you can stay. 
But hold the story till I give you a green light. Of course, Lieutenant. Never trust a woman, particularly this one. We'll do anything we can to help you, Lieutenant, but you understand. Look, Edwards, we'll get to the bottom of things as quickly and with as little scandal as possible. So far, these are the facts. First, Hector Rose didn't check out of the studio last night. That means he was killed here. Second, the killer used a small caliber pistol, a 32, the size a woman might carry in her handbag. Third, Mona Harrison had a fitting with Rose late yesterday afternoon, which ended in an argument. What are you trying to do? Pin it on Mona? No, I'm telling you how things add up. The packing case came from Rose's storage room shortly after Mona left the lot. I'd like to have a look at that room. Straighten it, Lieutenant. You show him the way, Lance. All right. Looks kind of bad for your little Mona, doesn't it? I'd like to know where you were last night. You wouldn't like it at all. Yeah. The box was right over here last night when we left. Yes, it was just about here. But Mr. Rose had labeled it himself after his disagreement with Miss Harrison. Oh, he had, had he? Mm -hmm. Yes, he was very happy about sending the material COD. He would be. What did they fight about? Go ahead, tell him. Well, they argued over the fit of one of her gowns, and finally she slapped him. Slapped him? Is that all? Well, he tripped over some bolts of material and fell down. It hurt his dignity. It's all very simple. Hector tried to return the slap later, and of course the poor girl had to defend herself, so she shot him. You just try making anything out of that in print, and you'll have to defend yourself from me, sweetheart. I've been looking forward to that, darling. Who are you? Well, this is Maxwell Kenyon, Lieutenant. He is, or was, Mr. Rose's personal representative and business manager. Now, yeah, what are you doing here? Protecting my client's interests. Well, a dead man doesn't have many interests, does he? Mr. Rose, dead? Yeah, murdered. The news hit the streets about an hour ago, or can't you read? If you didn't know, what are you doing here rummaging through his desk? Yeah, like a common criminal. He looks suspicious if you ask me. I didn't ask you. You better talk, mister. Well, there's nothing to talk about. I have a right to examine the contents of Mr. Rose's desk. I hold his power of attorney. Naturally, I shall take charge of his estate. And naturally, you'll answer some questions. Any time, Lieutenant. Okay, don't leave town. I haven't the slightest intention of leaving town. What's the idea of letting him go? I can pick him up any time. Well, suppose he was looking for something, something that Hector Rose might have hidden. What, for instance? I don't know. If we knew that, we'd be a lot closer to knowing who the killer was. Well, that's nice logic. But suppose you leave the detecting end of this to me. You get in my way. Oh, don't look so unhappy, Joseph. You can get in my way. I'll tell him when he comes in. Peggy, slip me Hector Rose's home address quick, will you? You know I'm not supposed to give out things like that, Joe. Not even for dinner at Ciro's? Ciro's? Well, that's different. Here you are, Joe. Oh, thanks. See you in the bar at seven. Seven? Well, that'll hardly give me time to dress. Oh, never mind dressing. You'd look luscious to me in an old beaten down bath towel. Ciro's. And he says, never mind dressing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, hello. I was just uh, saying to Peggy that... Yeah, we heard you. How about buying me a cocktail, Joseph? Oh, sure, honey, any time. Well, any other time. i got to go back to the office now. Wilson will buy you one. See you later. Will you take a rain check, Mr. Ant? I'm overdue at headquarters. What have I got that makes men avoid me so eagerly? Men. <laughs> Excuse me. I sing. Congratulations.
for me? Forever, ma'am. Thank you. I'll turn around. over to Hector Rose's bungalow in Laurel Canyon. Somebody's being killed. Hurry. when I heard you fighting. Worried? You worried about me? Yes, you big lug. Are you hurt? What happened? No, I'm not quite sure. Is he dead? Well, I don't know. Let's have a look. Well, he's alive. But somebody gave him a terrific beating. You certainly did. What's uh, that? <laughs> oh, Mona's check. The one she gave for the corpse? I'll take charge of that if you don't mind. Kenyon, huh? Did you find this on him? Yeah, well, it uh, sort of blew out of his pocket. While you were holding your breath, no doubt. He needs an ambulance. It's on the way. I ordered it when they started fighting. What were you trying to do, murder the man? I didn't do it. Someone else worked him over. Who, Mr. Rant? I suppose she hit you in the head, too. Now, listen, Wilson, I'll tell you all I know about this business. I came here looking for... Well, anyway, Kenyon tried to brain me with a heavy piece of statuary. I tackled him, he hit me on the head with a chair, and that's all I remember. Now, let's have your version. Well, I heard them fighting, and then I heard voices upstairs. Voices? Then someone else was in this room after I was put away. Maybe you talk in your sleep. I didn't say a word. I didn't even whisper. No, well, maybe you'll say a few words now. Why'd you come here in the first place? Well, I was looking for a clue. We all know that Kenyon was looking for something belonging to Hector. Clue hunting again, huh? Look, Joe, I've warned you before. Clues are my department. But I found a swell clue, the check. What does it mean? It means that Kenyon collected for that COD, that he got the check from the truck driver that your bright boys don't seem to be able to find. It could mean that he's the murderer. Not necessarily. As Rose's business manager, he might have picked up the check at his desk in the office. Impossible. We went through Hector's desk before Kenyon got there. Oh, you did, did you? Look, Mr. Ranch, you and Joe are going to stop playing detective right now. Stick to straight reporting before you get all snarled up in something too dangerous for you to handle. Yeah, well, uh, maybe you're right. Sure he is. Just plain as a lump on your head. Good. Now that we understand each other, get out and let me go to work. Wait a minute. Oh, hello, Dave. Where's Lieutenant Wilson? Inside. That ambulance for him? Unfortunately, no. He's his usual hale and hearty self. And twice as bossy. 
No, I could be persuaded to buy you one or more cocktails right at this very moment. Oh, that sounds lovely. But at this moment, I've got to phone in my story about how you beat up Kenyon. Read about it in the Bulldog Edition, sweetheart. Imagine you, the brute type. He's got a warm kiss, but a cold heart, a fondle and fooly caress. Ah, yes, this is that thing called love, I guess. Gee, this is great stuff, Joe. Can you afford it? Don't fret, Pat. It goes on the expense account under the head investigation. I knew it. Any time a newspaper man invites me to dinner, he wants something. What's on your mind? That uh, publicity director of yours. What do you know about him? Lance Fowler? Mm -hmm. Well, he's a funny guy. Sort of a lone wolf. Not your kind of wolf, Joe. You don't think he killed Hector Rose? Why not? Well, they were friends. Always in huddles. What about? I don't know. Once I heard them talking about a shipment of some sort. Mr. Rose seemed worried about it. Joe, I've been looking everywhere for you. Mona, you shouldn't be out tonight. Oh, I couldn't help it. I had to talk to you. You said you'd call me. I haven't had a minute. I've been working on some new angles. Angles, darling? Or curves? Would you mind if I joined you for a moment? <laughs> We'd be charmed, Miss Harris. Thanks. Have you uh, had dinner? Telephone yes, call, Mr. Mackford, in the booth. Oh, thank you. Well, dear girls will excuse me. Peggy, has Joe told you anything about these new angles? Hello, Joe. Hi. <laughs> Edwards, he wants me to come to the studio right away. What for? Didn't say. Who's the hot rod with Mona? I don't know. I think I've seen him around the studio. Thanks for the dance, Miss Harrison. Thank you. I enjoyed it. You're Joe Medford of the Inquirer, aren't you? Yeah. Who are you? Be careful what you write about Miss Harrison, if you want to keep on writing. Where'd you pick up the fugitive? I don't remember who first introduced me. His name's Rudy Frasso. He's always around the clubs. Well, he better button his lip or he won't be around much longer. Waiter, check, please. You're not leaving. After, that was a business call.
Cap. Well, thanks, Mr. Mitford. What's that? They're still shooting that escape scene. Oh, my nerves. <laughs> you are dropping like a couple of sacks of wet cement. Once more. And please, gentlemen, show a little more life when you die. Carl, we'll have to replace that actor. Take 43 coming oh, up. Hi. What's on your mind, Mitch? Sorry to get you over here at night, Joe, but I have some further information on Hector Rose. Oh, thanks. You don't mind if I take it along tonight, do you? Incidentally, what kind of shipments did Hector Rose receive here at the studio? Shipments? Oh, dress materials, yard goods, bolts of cloth. Why? Just a hunch of mine. I want to go through that storeroom where that stuff is stored. Now. Oh, the police have searched the place from top to bottom. Well, I might find something they've overlooked. Well, there's the master key. Thanks. Want to go along? No, I have a call in for New York. Be careful, Joe. Oh, don't worry. I'm bulletproof. you again. Oh, Joseph, I'm so glad it's only you. I thought you were going to stick to straight reporting. I suppose you're here for a new girdle. Look! Someone else was in the room. I'm going to see who it was, all by myself. Oh! rather late, aren't you, Lance? Lance! What's the matter with you? Joe! Well, don't look at me like that. I didn't kill him. But I just heard you talking to him. You didn't hear him answer, did you? Don't you wanted to look over Hector Rose's layout? I did. You didn't follow me by any chance, did you? Certainly not. I couldn't get Lance on the dictograph, so I came here to see what was wrong. You calling the police? Later. 
Give me the desk. Hello, Emmett. Joe Medford. Send Larry Massey over to Palisades right away. There's been another killing. Lance Fowler, director of publicity. Stabbed in the back with a fancy letter over him. And listen, Emmett, don't peep to a soul. I got the opposition locked up in a nice, cozy closet. Yeah. Call you later. Joseph! You wouldn't take over publicity for us, would you? No, thanks. What you looking for? Anything that'll give me a lead. Well, this must be Fowler's special list. His bookie, Hector Rose, Fra Frasso, Rudy Frasso. So that's the guy that danced with Mona tonight. Ever heard of him? Yes, I've met him. Lance introduced us. Fresno was selling jewelry. Hot stuff? Well, let's just say it was so cheap I wasn't interested. Well, that's good enough for me. I'll just keep this for future reference. You think there's a tie-up between this fellow Fresno and the murders? Well, I can tell you better when I've checked a few things. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here just as soon as my photographer gets here and we grab some pictures. But the police... Look, Mitch, nobody knows a thing about this but the killer and us. And that's the way I want it for the next few hours. Well, what about Miss Durant? Let her stay in the closet. She just loves closets. Back up and beat it. Okay, Joe. There's one sure thing about this killing. Only someone Fowler knew pretty well could get behind him with a pig sticker like that in his hand. Rosemary Dame, she snatched my plate case. Rosemary? idea of kissing a dishonest newspaper woman. Don't you have no ethics? Rush that stuff to the office. Never mind my ethics. Okay, let me know who wins the wrestling match. Okay, let's now let's see. Where were we? Oh, I remember. <laughs> don't you ever touch me again, you, you collaborator. Now, baby. And don't call me baby. Mona's your baby. Okay, Butch. You wanted to work as a team, didn't you? All right, let's do it. Nobody knows about this latest murder, so if you want to play along, I can put my finger on the killer by tomorrow noon. I have a hot idea. But not hot enough. My newspaper doesn't go to bed for two hours. I'm going to bust the story wide open. Oh, now, sweetheart, you've got to give me a chance. This means a lot to both of us. Yes, it means you'll scoop me again. I wouldn't trust you if I had an atomic bomb in each hand. Is that the way to talk to the man who's going to marry you? Me marry you? Are oh, you... come on. Edward's offered me Fowler's job tonight. And when the killer is captured, why, I can stop being a newspaper mug. There's no reason under the sun why I can't settle down and get married if the right girl comes along. Why, you cold-blooded, conniving creep! You probably killed Fowler yourself just to get his job! Hey, 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 sweetheart! Thank you. 
Hey, Rosemary, why don't you answer me? If you don't, I won't sleep away. you hit me with a cleaver? I didn't know you were hit until an hour ago. Mm. The night watchman found you and called the police. They just brought you here. Police? Fowler? How long have I been out? Long enough for me to write about the new murder from every angle. I didn't think that even you would cry me to make news for your paper. Oh, I didn't do it, Honest Joseph. Well, why don't we quit fighting and, and work together like you said? You know, I kind of go for that line you've been giving me. Oh, yeah, you do? Mm-hmm. You might have been killed, Joseph. She's right. You'll get it eventually if you don't stop trying to play detective. How do you feel? Grand, just grand. Who slugged you? I didn't see. You know, it's funny the way you happen to be right on the spot every time somebody is slugged or murdered. What were you doing at the studio last night? I was looking for the hookup between Hector Rose and Lance Fowler. The guy that killed them was going through Rose's storeroom last night. Oh? Find some evidence or just adding two and two? What's the matter? Anyone go through my clothes since I've been here? Why? Lose something? No. Just my cigarettes. Here. Thanks. As I was saying, Rose and Fowler were killed by the same guy. Why don't you find that truck driver that delivered Hector's body? He might be able to identify the murderer. Still the big clue man, huh? That truck driver is merely routine. The boys can pick him up anytime. I've got more important things to do. I'm convinced that Mona Harrison knows something about the killer, and I'm going to find out what it is. Mona is not involved in this. Besides, the truck driver can clear her. What about Rose's business manager, Kenyon? Hey, this is the Hollywood Emergency Hospital, and you had him brought here. I want to talk to him. You can't. Why not? He climbed out a window and got away clean before I had a chance to question him. When? Nine o'clock last night. That's before Fowler was murdered. Yeah, he's one of the more important things I'm interested in right now. Dick, come on. Where are you going? I'm going to clean up, go back to my office and write my version of this merry little mix-up, and then I'm going to take a nice long nap. Good. And lay off the clues, huh? I'd hate to think of you taking a nice long nap in the morgue. You want me, Joe? Yeah. I want you to get me all the dope we got on the morgue and a guy named Rudy Frasso and step on it. Rudy Frasso, okay. Oh, don't do that. I got a king-size headache. Pretty pictures, Joe, but I'm surprised at you letting yourself get boxed up by a female reporter. Well, a lot of sympathy I get. Is it my fault if some unknown and unsavory character taps me with a blackjack? You say in your story that the police want that business manager, Kenyon, for the murders. Oh, well, that's what Wilson says. Oh, you don't think he's the killer? No, I think the killer is the guy that beat Kenyon within an inch of his life. He's the same gent who tapped me on the head to get an address book that I lifted from Lance Fowler's desk. Yeah? Did you have a chance to look through it? Part of it, and one name stuck out. Here's the file on Rudy Frasso. Oh, thanks. You didn't mention Frasso. I didn't want to. Yet. Skim through these, will you? But I'm a little punchy. Just give me a fast rundown, huh? Hmm, this mug has quite a history. 1928, Hollywood's youngest bootlegger and silent partner in Sunset Strip Gambling House. 1931, released, lack of evidence. In 39, in a brawl at an ice skating rink. Claims he slugged a guy who was with a movie star whom he refused to name because he didn't want it to have any unfavorable publicity. Say, that could have been Mona Harrison. Yeah, maybe. What else? Oh, nothing much. He was mixed up in an insurance bunco scheme with one of the big jewelry stores. That didn't stick either, lack of evidence. Jewelry, eh? Yeah, sounds like a very cute citizen. Jewelry, Hector and Frasso, shipments. Someone was looking for something in those bolts of fabrics. Oh, brother. Where are you going? Fishing.
I'm terribly upset, Mr. Rant. I hope this interview won't take long. That all depends on you. Now we'll begin before the beginning. And don't hold out on me. Hold out what? Look, Miss Harrison, I'm a woman. I know the signs you're protecting someone. Who is it? I'm sure I don't know what you mean. Mona, I came to talk about your love life. If you're referring to Joe Medford, there's absolutely nothing between us. That I know. Joe never has time for anything more personal than a deadline. I'll go out and come in again. I came to talk about your love life. I refuse to discuss my past with you, Mr. Rand. It has nothing to do with these murders. I'm not so sure about that. I still say you're covering up for somebody. Why don't you tell me who it is? I'll tell you nothing except to leave. Now get out! I'm not getting out of here till we have a little chat about Denver. Denver? Yeah. Your old hometown. Shall I print what I know? You want to come over and sit down and we'll have a little talk? to print that story about my marriage, do you? No one in Hollywood knows about it because my name wasn't Mona Harrison then. Why'd you run out on him? I was afraid of him. He was no good. He even married me under a phony name. He hated me. He still hates me. You don't think this has anything to do with the murders? Could have plenty. What makes you say that? Only someone who hated you would have sent that body to you. And only the murderer could have sent it. Who are you talking about? Mona's ex-husband. I tell you, he had nothing to do with it. We'll take that up later. Right now, I want to ask you about this invoice. Invoice? Yes, I just found it wadded up in the packing case. You lied to me, Miss Harrison. There were eight bolts of cloth in that box with Hector Rose's body. There are only seven in the police property room. I want the missing bolt. I don't know what you're talking about. stall, Miss Harrison. I don't want to tear the whole house apart, but... All right, I did hold it out. It was the material from my Academy Award dinner gown. I didn't think it was important to you. Oh, you didn't, didn't you? Where is it? I'll show you. Are you playing games, Miss Harrison? It isn't here. But it must be. I wonder how it got there. So do I. What'd you expect to find, Lieutenant? Never mind, it isn't there. You may as well tell me. Someone, the killer, was looking for something in those bolts of cloth at the studio. What was it? 
That's my business. Now, don't get tough with me, Lieutenant. I may decide not to help you. You help me? Mm -hmm. Mona's ex-husband could have taken what you're looking for. What do you say, Miss Harrison? I have nothing to say about him. Withholding evidence is a felony. Maybe if I took you in, you'd talk. Nothing you do can make me say anything to involve my ex-husband in these murders. You must still love the guy. I told you I won't talk about him. How about you? I took nothing, sir. I have been in Miss Harrison's employ for more than... Okay, so you're an honest butler. But did you see anybody besides Miss Harrison go in this room today? Why, I... Uh... Look at me. I'm asking the questions. I know nothing about it, sir. Sure you didn't see anybody? Joe Medford, maybe? Mr. Medford? No, sir. I didn't see anyone. Sure, but I have to run downtown first. Meet you here at 7. Right. I'll leave the key downstairs, in case you get here ahead of me. Right. you, Claude? Yeah. This is Joe Medford. Oh, hello, Mr. Medford. What can I do for you? A favor. There's a character outside your place named Rudy Frasso. Will you tell him I want to talk to him? Hold on a minute. Hello? Frasso? I just want to ask you one question. You now have 32 teeth. Would you like to try for four? Or will you stop shadowing me? Oh, Mr. Frasso, such language. This is a great story, Joe. But how do you know that hot diamonds are at the bottom of the murders? That's easy. I got the diamonds. You what? That's right. Hidden away in a nice, safe place. Well, why not let the cops hide them? Because I'm waiting for the killer to show his hand. Think your plan is smart? I think so. It's all beginning to add up. You want to hear it? Sure. Okay. This is the way I see it. Rose and Fowler were involved in this deal. The hot stuff was shipped to Rose, hidden in bolts of cloth. And Fowler, being a publicity man, had plenty of Hollywood contacts, you know. People who'd pay cash for bargains. Frasso, he was the peddler. He's the guy that followed Fowler's lead. But somewhere along the line, there was a double cross. Or maybe Rose and Fowler wanted to bow out. So, they were murdered. By Frasso? Could be. But Frasso warned me not to print anything that would hurt Mona Harrison. So why should a guy who wants to protect her ship a corpse up to her house? That's an angle. And there's one thing I'm counting on. When my story about the hot diamonds hits the street, the killer will want to know where I got my information. So will Lieutenant Wilson, and he's going to be very unhappy. That's true. City desk. Yeah, just a minute. It's for you. It's glamour puss. Hello, Mona. Joe, I want you to come out to the house right away. Well, I can't right now. What's up? I can't tell you over the phone, but if you're still looking for the murderer, don't go on with it, Joe. You're in danger, and so am I. Are you alone? No. Is here. Oh. You can't come tonight, Joe? No, I'm all tied up, but I'll see you first thing in the morning. Bye. Hey, she's really jittery. Says something's going to happen to me. Well, don't let it slow you down. I'll see that you get the prettiest funeral a reporter ever had.
जाओ Joseph, are you there? I wouldn't do that if I were you. Who are you? What are you doing here? Take it easy, Mr. Rand. I'm not asking you questions. Don't ask me questions. Let me go. You. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Rosemary. I'll take that. You're a thoughtful guy. I was just about to give up looking. Looking for what? Uh, must you point like that? I was just about to shave. Shave without cream. Oh, I wouldn't like that. I got a very sensitive skin. If you'd like a massage with a gun barrel, hand it over. I could get my brains knocked out by guys like you. Who killed Rosen Fowler? Not me. I'm not the killer type. No. I suppose you're carrying this little cannon around for less. You're the diamond peddler in that big combine. Who's the big man? Who gets the payoff? I don't know. I wouldn't tell you if I did. Maybe you'd like a massage. I'm leveling Manford. Knocking me around won't get you anywhere. I don't know who the killer is. All right. I'll accept that answer for now. Let's talk about Hector Rose. He received our hot stuff, but he didn't get any cut. Mr. Big had something on him from back east years ago. Rose tried to hold out the last shipment. That was bad. What about Fowler? When Rose got murdered, he threatened to talk. Why were you so interested in protecting Miss Harrison? Maybe I liked the girl. She had nothing to do with the killings. And what about Kenyon? Is he dead too? Nah, he's probably hiding out somewhere, scared. You're too curious. You ought to be scared, too. And maybe you ought to be. There aren't any nightclubs to hang around in San Quentin. Well, go ahead. Why don't you yell, Copper? What's the matter? Are you afraid I'll tell him you got the ice? What was that? How would I know? <coughs> Rosemary. <coughs> you must have been born in a closet. Get me out of here. Yeah. Where is he? I'll tear him to pieces with my own teeth. Take it easy. He's gone. What's he doing here? What's he looking for? He's a cute citizen named Rudy Frass when he was looking. playing with that goo and listen to the hot lead I've got. This is important goo. I know who sent that body to Mona, and I know why. You don't say. He wanted to blast her career. Yeah? Get the lights. Maybe he still loves her. 
Maybe he figures if he knocks her off her pedestal, she'll come back to him. Who are you talking about? Mona's ex-husband. Oh, what? You didn't know she had been married, did you, Joseph? <laughs> sure, I knew it all the time. <laughs> I bet you did. I bet you know, too, that she's shielding him because she's scared to death of him. What's that? Diamonds. Real diamonds? Sure. Oh, that's what Wilson was looking for at Mona's home. Yep. But you got there first. Yep. Oh, you're not going to keep him, Joseph. Yep. You can't. Why not? It's dangerous. What's dangerous about it? But why hide them in there? Can you think of a better place for hot diamonds? You've got to turn those over to Wilson. I will not. What do you think I'm hiding them for? For laughs? Oh, I just won't let you do this. Oh, you and who else? Listen, you lug, you might get yourself killed. Frasso was after those diamonds. He might come back. Okay, so we won't be here. Come on. I'm hungry. You're always hungry. I still think you should call the police. Well, stop thinking. It might give you arthritis. Where'd you get the story, Joe? Why... Oh, Fine, partner. I thought you were going to share your stuff as soon as you got it. Well, I was just about to tell you about it. I don't like sharing your stuff after it's in print. Suppose we go back inside and you can tell us both about it. Sorry, we have a date with a steak. Inside. I have the key, Lieutenant. Who tore the place apart? A thug named Rudy Frasso. I think he's Mona's ex, the murderer. He might have murdered me. Too bad he didn't. What happened, Joe? I don't know. I found him prowling the place. I jumped him and he got away. Did he get anything? No, not a thing. He didn't come here just because you found his name in Fowler's address book. What was he looking for? Well, I don't know what he was looking for. Joseph, I think I need a drink if you don't mind. Wait, wait, wait. You don't want a drink. Not on an empty stomach. Oh, yes, I do. A nice stiff highball. No, you don't. I'll get you plenty of drinks when we go out to dinner. Why can't she have a drink here? Get me some ice, Lieutenant. There isn't any ice. I just fill the trays with water. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Durant. For once, Joe told the truth. Oh, well, there must be some ice. Oh, he's right, no ice. But there's got to be ice. It's gone. What, the ice? There seem to be plenty of ice cubes in the sink. What were you trying to hide in that tray, Joe? Who, me? Huh, nothing, nothing at all. If I... you don't tell him, I will. Rosemary, I... Diamonds. A fortune in unset diamonds. So the butler did lie to me. He saw you take them this afternoon. But there must be. There must be there. He put them there a minute ago. Well, they're gone, all right, and there's only one guy can have them. Hey, wait a minute. I'm going with you. You're not going anywhere. You try it and I'll have you picked up. Now, listen, Wilson. Don't tell me... You what... listen for once. You're in too deep this time, smart guy. You move out of here before I tell you to, and I guarantee you'll wind up in the Hollywood station on a felony charge. I did it for your own good, Joseph. Sure. Why don't you call the squad car for my own good? What's the matter? Mona. She's alone with Fields. Well, can't a lady be alone with her butler? Not tonight, Rosemary. Come on.
went her out, Dave? The butler. Drove off a couple of hours ago. Just got back. I thought so. Wait here. Don't let anyone through this gate until I give you the word. Park the car, will you? Okay, Mark. Lieutenant Wilson. How did you get in? I didn't want to disturb Miss Harrison, so I left myself in quietly. Have a nice drive, Fields? I haven't been out, sir. Yes, you have, Fields. It wasn't very smart of you to go off like that, leaving Miss Harrison alone. Lucky my partner was watching the house, so she was protected while you were out. Oh. You had someone watching the house, huh? Yes. You shouldn't have lied to me today, Fields. You saw Joe Medford take those diamonds today. You can give them to me now. But I... Get them. Yes, sir. I hope... I hope you don't think I'm responsible for the murders. Aren't you? No, sir. Oh, no, sir. No, I, I didn't. It was just when I saw those diamonds, I... You're going to arrest me now? No. No? No. Thank you, sir. Thank you. like you killed the others. I knew it must be you. Only you would send that body to me. You didn't talk then and you don't talk now, understand? Why did you kill Fields? Because only he knew I had a fortune in diamonds. Now only you know. Why are you telling me? Because you're gonna play it my way now. You're in this up to your neck for covering me. I didn't cover for you. I was afraid. You had a right to be. Nobody runs out on me the way you did. I told you I'd get you back. We're clearing out to Mexico, South America. I'm not going anywhere with you. No? You don't think I'm going to leave you here to talk, do you? Make up your mind what it's going to be, me or... <laughs> Don't stop us now, Dave. We've got to see Miss Harrison. You can't go in, Joe. Why not? Lieutenant Wilson says nobody's to go in. Well, he's in there. Now, wait a minute. I just told you the lieutenant doesn't want company. Look, I haven't got time to argue with you. The killer's in there with Mona. Lieutenant Wilson will handle them. I've just been struck by a great idea. What? This. <laughs> Pockets. Put on the lights. Rosemary. Search him, baby. He should have two guns and a sock full of diamonds. Throw me that 32. Well, this gun's just been fired. He killed Fields with it. I saw him. Oh, so Fields was number three. You're crazy. Yeah? And I suppose the slugs they dug out of Hector Rowe's body won't fit this little cannon. Then he's your ex-husband, huh? Yes. What does that prove? It proves that even detectives can make mistakes. I first began to suspect there was something phony when you wouldn't pick up that truck driver I kept harping about. You didn't want to pick him up. He was one of your stooges. But you got a little too clever when you sent that corpse to Mona. You did that to ruin her. What you didn't know was that Hector hid those diamonds he was holding out on you in that shipment of fabrics. Anything else? Yes. In my apartment tonight, you mentioned Lance Fowler's little address book. You couldn't possibly have known about that, unless you lifted it when you slugged me. And when you ignored Frasso and went straight to Fields, I knew that Frasso was your boy. He told you he didn't get the diamonds. Well, how does it add up? You ought to be wearing a badge. You won't be wearing one long, Mark. Get away from that gun. 
You don't believe any of this stuff, do you? Put that gun away. Not until the inspector has a chance to hear everybody's story. I'm not waiting for the inspector, Dave. I'm going to walk out of here and you're not going to do anything about it. Better not try it, Mark. You wouldn't shoot me, Dave. Remember the night of the Rosati raid? I saved your skin that night. I stopped a bullet for you. You'll stop another one if you reach for that gun. I like the way you do things, Joe. That job as publicity director is still open. Thanks much, but I'll stick to straight reporting. You see, Rosemary and I, we each got a bonus for our stories, and we're sort of figuring on building a little house in the San Fernando Valley. Right, baby? Right. We're going to put our bonuses together. Cut! Bill, Cut back all right, up, boys. Quiet, please. Good Such oh, artistry. You're my greatest dramatic discovery. And to think I found you hiding your talents in the reception room. But when do I get to sing? Take 54. Print it. 